Today we're going to talk about black and white photography. Hello my friends and let's get started. So black and white photography is more than just taking out the color of a picture. It's a very strong, amazing and beloved genre of photography. And today we will talk a little bit about why you should consider also making black and white pictures beside the color pictures you're going to take anyway. So on this page is a little bit of explanation, a lot of very nice examples. So some of the main reasons are that with black and white, with the color gone, you can work very good with light and shadows. You can work very nicely with textures and shape and you can work with the clarity or absence of clarity in a picture. So if you look, for example, at this picture, you can see that without the color, the viewer or you as a photographer con can concentrate on the things that are happening in the picture just from the structure, from the objects, from the light and shadows, from the very small textures to the very rough textures. And this is highlighted because you're not disturbed, you're not uh, kind of your mind is not flowing off into the colors of the sunset or the balloon or the leaves and the trees. No, you're focused on the structure, on what is going on. And you can use this to tell a story in your picture just with the gray values and black and white. So, of course, there's different kinds of black and white photography. Uh, for example, this is kind of a little bit bluish. There is soft or softer versions of black and white photography like this one or this one. But you can also use more hard contrasts like in this picture where you see the freckles and you see the skin folds very good. So black and white is a very good medium to create very strong portraits of a person. It's a very nice way to do that. Here you have other um, pictures that highlight the strengths of black and white photography. And of course, with a digital software, you have the power to decide which colors make it into your black and white picture and which colors are lighter and darker. So it's not just taking out the color. You can really decide, for example, in this picture to make the background and the sky very light because it's blue colors, it's water and the sky are blue colors. Why making this pathway here rather dark and high contrast because these are probably more brown colors in the original picture. So it's a lot of editing there in this and you can use this to guide the eye and to guide the feeling of the viewer. This one is an amazing picture. You don't even know, is it upside down? What is going on on the first moment? It's all kind of strange. It seems like those houses, those skyscrapers are maybe landing or standing on this black plateau and then you see no the white area is uh, clouds and the blue areas probably is a bright sky but because the blue has been made into a dark black it, it looks amazing and these buildings are standing out so strongly. So there's a lot of pictures here I will link this page this is an example of uh, right here of a very soft black and white picture It has a little bit of color mixed in so it has a kind of a bluish grayish hue uh, that looks very nice and interesting so a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, this one looks more like a sketch so you work in this picture with the clarity with seeing each single hair in this picture and gives a very strong imagination a very strong feeling uh, for this cat that you can see in the picture and it looks like a classic old um, sketching a print so it's a very nice effect. Uh, let's head over to another page where we can see some classic photographers and it's very nice to look at them and study them and see what they did and why they did that stuff even read up a little bit on their history and biography. This picture here is by Henri Brinson. He is a French photographer. Um, he is of course an older photographer. He doesn't live anymore, but uh, you can see from the pictures, this is not taken recently. But what you can also see from these pictures is that they have a very strong orientation and inspiration from classic paintings. So this is a very classic uh, way of building up a picture and showing what is going on in the picture. But it's a very, very nice storytelling kind of situation that's going in on here. 
uh, you can really feel into the kind of landscape, emotional, cultural landscape that's going on. You have multiple layers and very nice pathways for the eye leading from one thing to the next, like you would do in a classic painting. So Henri Bresson is really a very, very good example for this kind of black and white photography. Also here, very classic composition, very strong with the speaker from the back and all the crowd behind him and you're really focused on this kind of energy that is going on you're not um how do you say uh, your mind doesn't travel off into the colors into other things that are going on for example today when you see pictures from the presidential elections and uh, when people politicians speak there's a lot of colors and lights going on and flags and balloons in the air and all this kind of stuff uh, that is kind of irritating but here you can see you're really focused on this kind of situation is going on here and it's very very strong also you have on the right of the speaker you have this guy i don't know what he's doing maybe he wants to see him better maybe he's kind of a security guard so it's all very interesting um, here's another example of this photograph i really go and study this photograph he's really really nice Henri Bresson. Uh, again, I will link this post so you can look at it in detail. Another photograph that I want to show you is um, this guy down here, Edward Weston. And he does some really great examples that you can do yourself uh, because they work very nicely with structure and composition. For example, this is a pepper that you can eat, that you can cook with. It's just a vegetable. But... It looks like a bodybuilder. It looks like someone flexing the muscles. It has a little bit of a kind of a erotic touch even. It's a very strong photography from a very simple object. And I think this wouldn't work just as well if you had the colors because you would be distracted by a very strong green or a very strong red and of how it would feel more like a fleshy vegetable juicy kind of thing that you want to eat but here because it's black and white and you see this kind of texture it could be skin you want to touch it you when you look first at it you don't even know what it is it could also be a sculpture so very very powerful Another example is this one, just a cabbage leaf. It's such a simple thing. You can do this at home, but you can see just from making it black and white and going into the structure, into the shadows, into the composition of the picture, this becomes a work of art. It becomes a very strong picture. And you don't even think about salad or eating or that this is just a thing that you buy at the supermarket. What you see is a sculpture that could be made of stone from a very amazing artist and the flow and the energy that you see in this object gives you a very new perspective of how to look at things. And again, you can see here how the artist worked with converting the colors into black and white, not, of course, in a digital software, in this case by... Um, using chemicals and using different kind of photo techniques but you can see that the leaf is very uh, bright but has very dark shadows while the background is very black very dark so this leaf is really sticking out today we have a lot easier way to do this with our software where we can do this in post so it's much much easier for you and you can create amazing things just from fruit or vegetables that you get from the supermarket. So um, up here, another one, uh, Yusuf Karsh. I'm not sure if I pronounced the name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. He's a portrait photographer, very famous. I'm sure you you know his uh, portraits, have seen them somewhere on book covers, in TV, in a museum maybe. And also here you can see how powerful black and white photography can be you can see here is a little bit brownish it has a little bit of color in it not the original color but the kind of the paper color so um it's very different for example from this which is really just black and white and grays there is no kind of tint in there whatsoever um but also a very nice and strong portrait uh, very very interesting of course this one it's really famous and you can see here for example if you compare this picture to this picture how in this picture she looks like an artwork very amazing like 
a goddess even, so it's a really strong portrait. All is very soft, but all, all is at the same time very, how can I say, powerful, perfect, um, yeah, very, how can I say, I don't know, like a goddess, like a goddess, let's stay with that word. word. And then look at this picture. Very, very different. You see a person that is rough, that is human, that has problems and faults and there is creases and there is freckles and is a, a soft but at the same time very strong and rough looking clothing. Um, so you see that this is about different aspects. It's a very different portrait. It's about a very different person and a very different personality. And... This is really highlighting the power of black and white photography uh, in, yeah, for portraits. So really, really amazing stuff. Also here, a position looks even like praying. I don't think it's praying, but it looks a little bit like praying. You have this light. He's looking into the light, searching for answers from above, maybe, or from the public, but at least from the distance. And um, again, you have here kind of strong contrast. So the white here from the color is very blown out. Also on the face, a little bit blown out. You have this white line on the nose ridge here. But then again, you have very soft colors, especially here in the head area and on the skin area. So you can see that this is a person at the same time soft and charming and a nice person but also hard and um, decisive you know and having trusting his own beliefs and also believing in other powers from this position so as a lot of information is really amazing what is going on and again by taking out the color of this picture you can really concentrate on these structures on these elements so really Go and study these photographs, look what they do, maybe try to replicate it as an exercise and take something from that for your own work. And taking out the color from your pictures gives you, it doesn't take away something, it gives you more power, more creativity and to learn about all these structures. Afterwards you can mix in colors of course again, but you will have this new eye, this new sight, this new power of creating composing a picture working with light and darkness and with different textures and structures and so this is really amazing so this was the uh, video for today the next video will be about how to create a black and white picture in affinity photo and showing a little bit the tools on what you can do to make it softer and harder thank you for watching if you like my videos consider subscribing to me i do a new video every three days and you can also support me on patreon where you get a lot more benefits like my original files with all the layers and you can chat to me and I give you feedback on your work. So thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.